Hi there, and welcome to our worship today. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy as we worship together as a community. Feel free to make comments in the comment section, or you can email us at office at aldersgatetoledoumc.org. You can find us on the web at www. Aldersgate. AldersgateToledoUMC.org. Absolutely. You can also find us on Facebook. Also like. Like us on, the, like us on Facebook as well. Aldersgate Toledo UMC. I look forward to worshiping with you today. See you later. Join us now for the call to worship. O oh God, whose goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Remind us of your presence with us. Lord, you made Jesus, whom you raised from the dead, the gate through which we entered as sheep of our own flock. May we enter the sheepfold of abundant life. Pour out on us the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that admissed over the corruption of the age and over the voices of those who are intent on doing us harm and leading us astray. May we learn to recognize the voice of Christ, the good shepherd who came to show us abundant life.
Hey everybody, it's Miss Katie. Do you see those boxes behind me? Those are called bee boxes. And inside those boxes are hundreds and hundreds of bees. Do you know what bees make? That's right, bees make honey. And honey is one of my favorite treats. Did you know that honey is talked about in the Bible a lot? But today, we're going to talk about honey in a different way. In Psalm 119, verse 103, it says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Wow. You mean reading the Bible and reading the words out of the Bible are sweeter than honey? How amazing is that? So even though I really like the taste of the honey that comes out of my bee boxes, God's word is just as sweet. Take some time during this time that we can be together as a family. Read a story from the Bible together and talk about it. Thanks guys, I miss all your faces. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Collins and I am the Youth and Family Pastor at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. I want to invite you into a time of prayer during this point of our service. We pray because it is a means for us to be in communication with God. It's a way for us to connect with God. It reminds us of our ever important relationship that we have between you and God. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to have big words. Just remember that in 1 Thessalonians, it is said that we are supposed to pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't mean that we pray for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It just means that we are in consistent and constant communication with God. So as we enter into our prayer time today, let us remember to be in constant and consistent communication with God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for the church that all people in the name of one Lord may hear and listen to the voice of the shepherd who calls us to unity. We pray for the world that the rich nations may share justly the abundance of the earth that belongs to all people. We pray for the oppressed and afflicted and those in need of help, that those who have been robbed of innocence and joy by the abuse of others may find the goodness of the shepherd in all who care for them. We pray for the needs of our community, that the youth may find authentic and attractive witness to the joy of life in Christ, and that we, may be so filled with grace and justice that they see you in all of our works. We pray for those who suffer either from poverty, profound sadness, addiction, chronic illness, those who suffer with COVID-19, cancer, and all of the ailments that this world holds and carries, that they may have hope and healing and peace in dying that you come for each fallen sheep to bring into the eternal pastures of your field to save forever from further suffering. We pray for those who are the caretakers, the families and the loved ones of those who suffer. We recognize their pain and worries and stress and grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear the voice of your sheep, sinners of your own redemption, as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time in our service where we take an offering, or we call it tithing in the church. And tithing is, um, our relationship with tithing is deeply rooted in our ancient and ongoing relationship with God. And we recognize that all we have comes from God, and that it's a blessing, and that in response to all of the good things that God provides for us as the Good Shepherd, and in loving care for those around us, that we share from our resources to build a fair and a just community, and to address the needs of those around us that are brought on by life and, life and unjust systems. Before the offering, we do an invitation because God invites us to participate in this offering, which is another dimension of our relationship with God. During this time of COVID, I think it is important for us to say how we at Aldersgate are continuing in God's, fulfilling God's mission. We want you to know that we have not stopped. We have not stopped participating and, and being relevant in the community and, and in helping God's people and meeting those needs where they are. We are continually active in responding to the needs of this community and the community and the larger community across the country and around the world. We are we support the ongoing missions including our connectional miss, missions and to those needs as they arise. So it is this time that we invite you that as you um, have been mailing in and giving through either direct deposits or by mailing in your offerings, that we offer them back to God. We are really excited to be able to, in the very near future, to offer an additional ways of giving. Um, we are trying to set up either PayPal or some of the other options for you to make it easier and more convenient for you. But it is still an act of worship, whether it goes through the mail or through the bank or or whether you come and drop it off, it is a way for us to still be in relationship with God. And so the Good Shepherd who provides us for all and meets all of our needs invites us for this time of offering.
God, we give you thanks for the multitude of ways that you've given to us that you, as the good shepherd, provide for all of our needs. We know that we trust in you, and we trust that as we give into the needs of the community and the world around us, as we continue to support the global missions of the United Methodist Church and the different things going on in our community here in Toledo, that you fill and meet our every need. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thieves come only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So this morning we hear a lesson that John is telling us about this time when Jesus is further instructing the disciples. He's already just walked away from the Pharisees and has had a run in with them and now he's with the folks that are still listening, still following. And he tells them this, he uses this analogy and he tells them the story that is confusing to say the least it, it ends up sounding more like a riddle and we even today we try to to um, uh, unravel it and to really try and have to tease out its meaning but I love riddles I love those things I know as a kid we used to have a game called mindset and it was a box of cards and they it had stories in it and so you would have to pull a card and read the story and find out and solve the mystery. Um, and so you could ask all the yes, no questions you wanted to to find out the answer. So for instance, one of my favorite was one where, uh, because it was so hard, uh, the story simply said, a man walks into a restaurant, he sits down at the table, he orders seagull. The seagull comes, he takes one bite of it, and he goes out and he kills himself. Why? And so you could ask all these yes, no questions. Well, it turns out he was a sailor. He'd been shipwrecked and that he had been told he was eating seagull, but he realized when he ate the seagull that it wasn't at all. It, it's, so I love those kind of mind puzzles. And um, I was just introduced by my daughter to a new game called a maze. And um, it, it's, it's, by, uh, it, it's produced by Neil Patrick Harris and um, it's another game about riddles and puzzles and so that's like super fun for the family there's like um, fill in the blanks there are cards that you have to answer a similar riddle and it's just kind of a fun thing and I love also watching those America's uh, funniest videos about 
Like people who are, tr are uh, my favorite is the one where somebody says to um, somebody else in the room, y -E what does Y-E-S spell? Y-E-S spells yes, right? If Y-E-S spells yes, what does E-Y-E-S spell? And because of the way it's phrased, they have a really hard time figuring out what it is. And you'll see them thinking, it is hilarious to watch. And so I love those things. Um, our scripture today reads a lot like those riddles. There is a gate and the gatekeeper and, you know, so on and so on. And listeners are supposed to sort out what's important in this story. What is important? What is he trying to say through this? Most of us only have a vague idea of what he's really talking about. But Jesus begins, I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the gate, doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the walls, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger because they don't know his voice. Those who heard, this, heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. Right away, we're introduced to the main characters of this story. There is a sheep pen, and there is a gatekeeper, and there is a gate, and there's a shepherd, the good shepherd, and the sheep, and robbers, and thieves, and, and animals. And now most of these folks that were listening were not shepherds like us. Uh, we don't really know a lot about, I mean, most of us don't know a whole lot about sheep and shepherding. And they may, may or may not have known much about it, but they could, and we can, relate to the need to protect what is valuable. What is value to that, valuable to them and what helps them to, um, uh, to keep and retain anything that has value assigned to it. So they would know that as soon as something was, was valuable, that somebody would be there ready to steal it or take it away um, or rob it from them. So John tells us this directly. He says, those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. Jesus had to let them in on some really important information about shepherding. He says the guard, the guard at the gate opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Whenever he, whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't recognize his voice. It's important information for those of us listening. It sets the scene, but it doesn't really still explain much. So who is this new gatekeeper? Who is the gate, uh, who is the shepherd? That, is in, that needs to be at, led into this, to, to the pasture. So Jesus continues, I assure you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find good pasture. The thief enters only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came so that you could have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. See, Jesus has told them who he is. And lo and surprise, he says, I am the gate. I don't know about you, but most of us don't see that coming. We're looking at Jesus being the good shepherd. We, we jump to that. In fact, we almost always ignore this when we're studying this scripture that he says that he is the gate so i got to thinking about the image or the symbol of the gate or the door those who know something about shepherding in the ancient world would know 
how true that is. In fact, there are no doors and no gates in a sheep pen or a sheep fold. The reality is there are large rock enclosures that kept the sheep safe during the night on their travels to and from different areas to feed. And there wa they were tall enough that, that most animals would really have to work to get in to get at the sheep. Or if someone was coming to steal the sheep, they would have to at least um, get the sheep through and past the gate in order to get out. And so he's explaining to this, this to them. He's saying that, that um, sheep being, not being um, the, the smartest animals in the world needed protection. And in fact, Jesus says that he lays down his life for the sheep. Now this, is, so he being the gate, he is laying down his life. Literally, the shepherd would lay in front of the opening at night to sleep. And so they would put their life online. Sometimes robs, robbers and thieves would come in and try to attack the shepherd. So Jesus is trying to tell us and tell them that he is the way and he is the gatekeeper. He keeps them safe. And again, sheep are not the smartest animals in, in the world. And so um, they are by nature fidgety and nervous creations and creatures. You know, I love to Google dumb sheep videos. It really is a thing. Um, my favorite one is one about sh a sheep with a swing set in a fight with a swing set. It is amazing. But you can see how, like, if one jumps, all of them jump. And so they need to find a place where they feel secure and where they feel safe. Um, we know that the, most of the enclosures were round because, because corners were a problem for sheep. Apparently, sheep, when they would get into a corner, had a really hard time finding their way out. And if something came to startle the herd, they ran the risk of being trampled. And so um, they, needed to, they needed to be round so to avoid that kind of problem. Well, they needed the, 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 the point is that they needed a, a place where they could feel safe and where they had everything that they needed. It was a good but imperfect system. According to Jesus, the shepherd was, was well aware of the dangers that lurked for, for the sheep in the sheepfold. The dangers that looked just, lurked just outside of the protective gates and the protective walls that they provided. They were, of course, wolves. And, and uh, at that time, there were lion and, and other animals that would feed on sheep. And there were also people. So who were the wolves and the thieves in the story that Jesus was telling? Well, I had said that more than likely, Jesus was still addressing the Pharisees who had, over the centuries, taken the power on for themselves and controlled the money and the social environments of the Hebrew people. People who were, who were meant to live in peace and abundance and in harmony found themselves enslaved. Enslaved by the volumes of laws and rules that were set up and established by the religious leaders. And all of those rules and restrictions were a heavy burden on them, both, both socially and financially. They were controlled by the financial burdens and demands that were put on them. But I don't think that Jesus is limited to just the Pharisees and the religious rulers. His analogy was loose enough to include the competing thoughts that were circling around them all of the time. The things like uh, the practice of absorbing some of the pagan practices and holding on to some of the pagan idols of their neighbors. Things like um, the different sects within the Jewish tradition. And also things like the, the different groups of disciples, even like John's group of disciples, who would have been prominent at the time. Fortunately for us, we can hear it speaking to the growing world theologies that we face all the time as well. Especially that new agey stuff that we hear about all the time. 
The reality is there will always be people and ideas that will try to get in every other way but then the door. Jesus was specific enough for those first listeners and for us to understand his point. And that is that there are many competing thoughts and philosophies out there. But there is one opening that leads into this new Eden, if you will, this safety and a uh, place of safety and this just place where our needs are met and we can live in peace. And Jesus is the gate. By telling the people the story, Jesus sets up the sheepfold as this new Eden where, where he is painting a picture of God's sheepfold where the sheep are protected, where they're led to still waters, besides still waters, and where the grass is green and plentiful. It is in contrast to those who come to steal and to kill and destroy. It is in contrast to, to the lives of those folks that are heavily burdened and the life it was. It was a metaphor for the spiritual safety and the abundance of life of all who seek peace and justice and to rest in relationship. And remember when we talk about Jesus being the gate? Well, he said that he was also the good shepherd. And like I said, we know now how that is impossible. He is not only the gatekeeper, but the gate itself. And he is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the protection and, uh, and, and the offering of, of, this, of this pasture of God's own fold. He said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. As a good shepherd, he lays down his life for the gate into the fold. I give my life up. I lay down my life for my sheep. What I found interesting is what the gate or the door is not. A gate isn't the sheepfold. It isn't the, the sheep pen, but it's a pathway through which the sheep enter and leave. What's so interesting about the sheepfold in Jesus' analogy is that thieves and robbers will clamor to get in in almost every other way that they can. The answer comes in verse 10 when he says, I come so that they could have life and a life abundant. Indeed, that they could live life to the fullest. Jesus is the gate into abundant living, into a new and deeper relationship with God. It is a relationship where we both cry out to God and where we praise God and where God nudges us and beckons us as well to come closer and closer and listen to the call of his heart. In and through that, we are transformed, having both reached out and received back in relationship with God. Jesus solves the riddle for us, introducing us to the love of God through his example and sacrifice. I know, I know that in this time of self-isolation, that it's getting to us all. We all wonder if things will ever be the same again. We've lost lo the lives of those that we love. We have been separated by others over space and distance. We have put plans on hold and some, in some cases had to entirely forget about some things. We have been we have been fearful of this infection and how to stay safe from it and how also to protect one another. We have watched men and women continue as healthcare workers and EMS and police officers and first responders. And I am particularly grateful for the folks who work at like Walmart and Kroger's because I don't know about you, but I need food and if it wasn't for them, I couldn't have access to them. 
and they are vulnerable to all kinds of risks, and so I'm very grateful for them. These things, life and death and illnesses and separation and divorce and, and all kinds of things are still going to happen during this time. But our relationship with God, abiding in God through Jesus, offers us peace and safety and hope. May you hear the voice of Jesus calling to you, a sheep of his own fold, and may you find peace. Amen. Thank you.